Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to talk about how we can use the distributive property to help us find the area of larger rectangles. So we kind of introduced this yesterday in our previous lesson, um, and today we're going to kind of dive in a little bit more with using the distributive property. So our learning goal for today says, I can use the distributive property to find the area of larger rectangles by adding the product of two smaller rectangles. So the materials that you'll need are a whiteboard or dry erase board, your lesson 10 template, which looks like this and can be found in your, the module or in your workbook, and centimeter square tiles. You might have centimeter cubes, that's fine as well. As long as they're centimeter size, you'll be good. Okay, so friends, first you need your lesson template. So we're gonna take a look at that. On, on the top we have a shaded portion and then we have an unshaded portion. How many rectangles do you see when you look at that picture? Oh, some of you say one, some of you say two, oh, some of you say three, hmm. All right, well, I'm gonna actually just make mine out of a drawing like this so it's easier to see, okay? Uh, so we can zoom in a little bit more. Now, when I look at this, I see one rectangle here in yellow. I see a second rectangle here in red and then I see a third rectangle here in green. Now on yours, you're gonna have the top part is gonna be shaded and the bottom part is unshaded. So just keep that in mind as you follow along with me. Okay, so you're gonna use your centimeter tiles to fill the large rectangle. Uh, use different color or different color for each of the smaller rectangles. So on the top shaded part, you're gonna to wanna to use one set of colors for your centimeter cubes and on the bottom, use another set. It's easier to make the difference stand out or the two rectangles stand out. If you don't have that, that's okay. Just make sure that you can tell where one rectangle starts and the other one begins. So even if you use just a different row for the row in between, okay. Then you're going to find the area of the large rectangle. So go ahead and pause the video, fill in the rectangle with your centimeter tiles or cubes, and then find the area of the whole large rectangle. And then click play when you're ready to go to the next step. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. So what did you guys come up with with the area? 48 square centimeters. Okay, awesome. How'd you guys figure that out? Ah, some of you counted, and then some of you used multiplication. Okay, cool. All right, so let's dive in a little bit more to this. So here I have a picture where I chose to use red centimeter cubes for the shaded triangle or rectangle and yellow centimeter cubes for the unshaded rectangle. So mine is exactly like yours. It's just, I have it drawn up here on the board using the different colored tiles, okay? All right, so you're gonna use your centimeter tiles to find the area of the shaded rectangle. Label the side lengths on your templates. So you can write right on there, and I want you to label the side lengths that you see. So pause the video, do that, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here's what I came up with. So my side lengths are six centimeters and five centimeters. Did you guys come up with that too? Okay, awesome. Um, now, if you ended up saying eight across the left-hand side, that's just because you did the whole side, but we're only focusing on the shaded rectangle for right now. So if you wrote eight on the left or on the right, I want you to switch it to five centimeters just for this next part that we're gonna do, okay? All right, so now you're gonna write a multiplication expression, or what multiplication expression can you use to find the area of the shaded rectangle? So how would I solve that part? And then I want you to write the expression next to the shaded rectangle. So pause the video, do that step, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. Okay, friends, make sure you pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here's what I came up with. So remember, you're just gonna multiply the two side lengths that you know. So it would be five times six. What side length do we already know for the unshaded rectangle? So on yours, it's unshaded. On mine, it's yellow. So what, do we, what side length do we already know? 
Yes, six centimeters, because the opposite sides of a rectangle are always the same length. Perfect. So I want you to find the other side length for the unshaded rectangle and label it on your rectangle or on your template. Okay, so in mine it's the yellow part, on yours it's the unshaded side. So we're looking for what are these two side lengths right here. Okay, so pause the video and then you're going to write a multiplication expression that you can use to find the area of the unshaded rectangle. So just like we did for the top, now we're going to do that same thing for the bottom. So pause the video, find the unknown side length, and then write a multiplication expression to find the area of that. Okay. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here's the side length that I came up with was three centimeters, because you can just count those cubes, right? That's really all that we're doing for this is we're counting the cubes. Then we have three times six would be how I could find the area of the unshaded or yellow rectangle. How can we use these two expressions to help us find the area of the large rectangle? So we kind of broke it into two rectangles here, how can we use those two to help us find the area of the larger rectangle? Think back to our previous lesson. Right, so these two right here, how can those help us? Yeah, we can add them. We can add those two together because those two smaller rectangles make up the larger rectangle. Awesome. All right, so write a number sentence to show this and then solve. So we're looking to use those two equations, multiplication equations, and then I want you to solve it. So pause the video, write your new number sentence, and solve it, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here's what I came up with. So I just took the two multiplication equations and I added them together. So five times six plus three times six. And remember, you have to use your parentheses to know what order you have to do things in. So you would solve five times six, then you would solve three times six, and then add those together to find the total of 48. So the area of this larger rectangle is what, friends? Yeah, it's 48 square centimeters. Okay, so let's look at this a little bit differently. So write the value of the side as an addition expression. So over here, we already measured that this, the shaded or red rectangle is five centimeters and the unshaded or yellow rectangle is three centimeters. So how could we write that as an addition equation to label the total side length? Pause the video, go ahead and write that and then click play when you're ready for the next step. Okay. So it would just be five plus three, right? Because that would give us the total. We know that five plus three is eight. You could check that to make sure that that is the total side length by counting the squares down the left or right hand side. And then you should have eight squares. So what will you multiply this by to find the area? So if we have that side length is five plus three, what do we multiply it by to find the area? Yeah, by six, right? Because that's the other side length. So you have to do length times width. So write that in your expression. But don't forget to add those parentheses because we're doing our adding first. So put your parentheses in. So pause, go ahead and do that and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends. So here, add in your parentheses and you're multiplying by six. So now that we have the parentheses, what's our new expression? So if we were to kind of solve this and add those pieces together first, do your adding, it would be five plus three, which is what, friends? That's eight. So we would go into what? Write your new equation that you would come up with if you're solving your five plus three. Okay, here's what I came up with. I'm gonna shift this over so I have some space would be eight times six, because five plus three is eight multiplied by six. Now friends, kind of check this out where they're getting this from. So we know that the total side length is five and three. We add those together and that gives us our eight. So they're really kind of like using the distributive property here. They're breaking apart one of the factors into a five and an eight. 
Remember, we always like those ones that have to do with fives. Those are super easy. Anything with fives or even as our numbers get larger, if you can break into a group of 10, we can multiply by 10 pretty easy because that's just skip counting by tens. So pretty cool. They're using the distributive property with this to be able to help us. Okay, so check out this rectangle below. Okay, so I want you to label the side lengths on it. So what would the side lengths be? Then I just want you to do like a quick draw on your dry erase board of this rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Please don't draw in all of these rectangles. That's a waste of time. So just do a quick sketch of it. And as long as the sides on the right and left are longer than the sides across the top and the bottom, it's fine because you're going to label them so someone would know. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, do a quick sketch of this rectangle and label the sides. And you're going to want to count what I have up here to be able to label your sides. And then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. All right, here's the side lengths that I came up with. 15 centimeters and 8 centimeters. If you didn't label with centimeters, it's okay. Add that in real quick now just because you didn't maybe necessarily know those were centimeters. But now I'm going to tell you, so you can add in your unit of measure. Okay, so what multiplication expression could we use to find the area? Yeah, it would just be 15 times 8, right? Because you're multiplying those side lengths. How can you partition this rectangle and use the distributive property to make it easier to add? So just like when we, in the last example, we had a shaded and an unshaded, they just drew a line to break it apart. That's what partitioning means. You're just breaking it into two parts, okay? So how could we do that? Pause the video. I want you to try and do that on your um, drawing. Or you could even point across the finger in the screen with your finger on where you would actually draw the line to partition the rectangle into two parts. They don't have to be equal parts, but think about what could we use that would help us. I don't know about you guys, but multiplying by 15 is a really big number. So to me, I would break that up. So I'm going to be drawing my line straight across. So go ahead and draw where you'd like to split it up. All right, friends, this is where I chose to draw it. I split it right here. And the reason why I did that is because it gave me nice, easy numbers. For this example, I want you guys to label the new side lengths that I just came up with. So where I drew my line, I want you to label the new side lengths on your diagram to your rectangle. And then I want you to show how you can use the distributive property. So notice you're just counting. So in the bottom here, I did one, two, three, four, five. So there's five centimeters on the bottom. So then up on the top, you would count that as well, and then use those numbers to use your distributor property. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Label your new side lengths and use the distributor property to help break apart that factor of 15 into the easier parts to be able to multiply. So then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. All right, so here I'm going to move this 15 out of the way. Now my new side lengths are 10 centimeters and 5 centimeters. That helps me because multiplying by 10 is way easier than 15, and then I'm only left with 5. So I can solve this problem pretty easy. But I have to say, though, friends, probably when I look at 15 times 8, that kind of intimidates me a little bit and think, oh, you know, I don't think I can work with numbers that big. But I can use the distributive property, and I can multiply by 10 and 5, so that helps. So here's how I would write that. So this is exactly the kind of stuff that you're going to see on your problem set today. So you're going to break apart that factor, which would be 10 plus 5 equals the 15. Then you're going to write your two new multiplication expressions that go along with that. So each one of those add-ins, you're going to multiply by 8. So 10 times 8 and 5 times 8. Then you solve each one. So 10 times 8 is 80. And friends, what's 5 times 8? 40. So now I add 80 plus 40 and I get 120. So 15 times 8 equals 120. So the total area for this rectangle 
is 120 square centimeters. Don't forget to label your unit because we're measuring in centimeters. Then you also need to add in square centimeters because we are finding the area. Okay, so nice job friends being able to use the distributive property to find the area of larger rectangles. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.